Welcome to the AI Research Bytes. This is a series of short and informative talks showcasing cutting edge research work from the AI Research team. The AI Research Bytes are open to all, especially those interested in keeping up with the fast pieces AI Research community. This is a bi weekly series of 15 minutes presentation plus 10 minute question answer session. Our target audience are AI practitioners and pra um, program managers working on AI products. For this session, Arjun Ashok will present his latest work, Lag Lama, towards foundation models for time series forecasting. Arjun is a visiting researcher at ServiceNow Research and a PhD student at Mila Quebec AI Institute and University de Montreal. As advised by Irina, is advised by Irina Rich and Alexander Druin. His research interests are in time series forecasting, with a focus on designing scalable general purpose models for time series prediction. Please ask questions in the question answer panel, and we will ask answer them at the end. Let's welcome Ar Arjun. Arjun, whenever you want, you can start. Perfect. Thank you so much for the introduction, David. So my name is Arjun, and in today's AI Research Bytes, we will be covering Lag Lama towards foundation models for time series forecasting, uh, one of our recent works. So just before I start this presentation, this is a safe harbor notice that all the content of this presentation is to the best of my knowledge. And the agenda for this talk will be the first one will be what is forecasting and why do we have to care about it? And the second topic that I'll cover is why do we need foundation models for forecasting? Uh, and the third part is the model itself, which is Lag Lama. So let's dive into it. So what is forecasting and why do we have to care about it? So forecasting involves predicting the future in simple terms. And why do we have to care about it? Because that enables anticipation of needs, which gives you the ability to manage resources, costs, time, et cetera. For instance, a lot of tasks within ServiceNow can be formulated as forecasting tasks. Uh, for instance, if you want to predict the GPU usage in, in the cluster and prepare, uh, that's a forecasting task. If you want to predict the volume of incident creation in the platform, that's a forecasting task. If you want to predict KPIs or key performance indicators and prepare, for the future, that is also a forecasting task. Uh, or if you want to predict the demand for various resources in the cloud. There's many more applications within ServiceNow, for example, in products such as ITOM, the IT operations management, management and, and platform analytics. And a lot of decision makers have roles that rely on making what-if forecasts. For example, a manager needs to make what-if forecasts and, and prepare ahead with the KPIs, et cetera, or a regional manager you know, may need to take in the demand and forecast demand and prepare for the future. So forecasting is useful in a lot of scenarios. Now, if we formalize this a little bit more, this can be formalized as univariate probabilistic forecasting, where the goal is you're given with observations from a single time series, and you have to estimate the set of possible future values. Now, if you look at the time series at the left, you have history from the time series, which is the orange line. And whatever shaded in green is the forecast. And whatever shaded in blue inside that is the probabilistic forecast of your model, where it gives a set of values for those, those time steps, which you can compute the uncertainty from. And this is very important because when you want to use these models for decision making, you don't want a model that can just give a specific value with full confidence. You want to know how confident the model is at every time step, so you can decide whether to use those predictions or not. Now, there's a specific kind of problems within forecasting called cold start problems, where you have limited or no history at all for your task. Now, let me give you two examples of cold start problems. For instance, if you have a new product and you, and you want to forecast the usage of that product, like to, to prepare for your market and so on, it's a very difficult task because you have no history of that product. And that product can be completely different from all your previous products. Or if you have a new GPU cluster, for instance, NVIDIA gives us a new grant 
and then you want to forecast the traffic within that cluster, it's, it's a difficult problem because you have no history uh, of usage of the specific GPU cluster. So when there's limited history to train on, models that are built for these specific tasks, which is the usual setup in time series forecasting, where you train a single model for each task, these models fail. And you need a model that can do push button forecasting. You take a model and you push a button and you get great forecasts from that model. Now these models are called foundation models in the community. And these are nothing but large models which are trained on a lot of data and can be used off the shelf on many tasks. Now, the figure on the right gives you an example of, of what a foundation model can be. It is trained on a lot of data from different modalities possibly, and it can be adapted to a lot of tasks, say question answering, uh, information extraction, captioning, and so on. This has been well explored for modalities like language. You already have chat GPT for language, and you have star coder for code and so on. And you have a lot more for vision and a lot more modalities. Now our goal with Lag Lama is to build foundation models for time series. And a TLDR of the entire presentation is that although you can get inspired by models built for other modalities like LLMs, you cannot directly use them. But you can adapt them in simple ways and make it work for time series. This is what we do with Lag Lama, which is a foundation model for forecasting. Let's start with the architecture. Now you start with a simple transformer architecture, specifically one called Lama which was proposed years back. And it has four simple steps. Initially, it tokenizes the text, it preprocesses it pre the text, and then it embeds it to a different dimensional space. It projects it multiple times with self-attention layers, and then it performs prediction. And the figure on the right gives you an example of what each of these components are uh, in terms of the exact operations. It takes an input and it embeds it to a space, it performs N self-attention operations. And finally, it performs prediction. And we have to modify two components of Llama or any transformer to make it work for time series. And those two components are tokenization and prediction. Now let's see how we modify these two. Now coming to tokenization, tokenization is nothing but pre-processing the input so a model can consume it. You take an LLM, you're basically the, the goal is to process sentences. So if you consider a sentence that is LLMs are cool, the tokenization converts this into five tokens, LLM, S, R, cool, and a period. And LLMs can employ discrete tokenization because in language you have a vocabulary. So the possible set of words are finite or the possible set of tokens are finite. But in time series, for instance, if you look at the figure here, it takes on continuous values. There is no vocabulary that you can tokenize this into in a discrete manner. So we have to adapt this tokenization strategy and we cannot use this directly. That's the first modification we make in Lag Lama in the tokenization. And each time step in Lag Lama is tokenized with three components. The first component being the context which is the finite history before a time step. Of course, if you wanna predict anything into the future, you need to have the history. And having this history explicitly, the consecutive history is very useful for prediction because a lot of patterns are in the history itself. And that's the first component. The second component that we use in our formulation are lags. Now lags are not just history, but specific points in history, which may even go beyond this finite context that we take in, in the first step. And what are lags? So if you look at a weekly forecasting task, there's a high possibility that your, your value that you wanna predict is highly correlated with the one week before value or the two weeks before value or the three weeks before and so on. And this is found in a lot of forecasting tasks of different frequencies that specific past values, which are called seasonal values, of that specific season or frequency are much more important than the entire, a lot of other points. So what we do is we take specific points from the past and we append it to our token. That is what's depicted in the blue. 
And beyond that, we use time features, which are information about the time step that we want to predict. So you could have the context and lags and perform prediction, but in time series, you're probably going to predict something in a real world setting where you are indexing it in a real world date time timestamp, right? So you basically give this timestamp as input to your model and that is what is depicted in red here. So with these three components, you perform tokenization. And the next component that we have to change is prediction because as I said, LLMs employ discrete prediction also like tokenization because they have a vocabulary that they can directly predict the next word in a finite set of words. But in time series, it's continuous, so you can take on any value. The number of possible values you can take are infinite here. So we have to simplify this and, and find out a way to perform prediction. So what we do in our formulation here is we pick a statistical distribution, say a normal distribution, and then we predict the parameters of the distribution. Now, let me go into detail what this is. Consider the figure on the right, you have a history and you have a forecast where you have these samples which are shaded. And above that, you have a distribution. And instead of predicting each of these points which are shaded, you take a distribution and every distribution defines the shape where each value can take a probability. And what you just do is you predict the shape of the distribution. And how we actually predict the shape of the distribution is through its parameters. So in simple terms, we just pick a distribution and we predict its shape. And this simplifies a lot of things because once you have a distribution like this, you can sample from it for every time step and you can get these samples. And having these samples, you can compute the uncertainty and you can use it for decision making. And that's how you, you do probabilistic forecasting with lag -lab. Now that we've seen the two components and how we can change them, let's see how LagLama performs in a real world setting. So as for any foundation model, any other foundation model like GPT, we need to train these models on a lot of data because we're looking to, to do push button forecasting. And what is push button forecasting? You take your model, you apply it on any data, which can, be, which can have any properties, it has to work well, which means the pre-training time series has to come from a lot of domains. So if you look, if you look on the right here on the domain column, our data comes from energy domain, transport domain, cloud, air quality, and a lot of these other domains. The second desideratum here is that the time series must be measured at varying frequencies. So if, if you look at the frequency column on the right, you see that a lot of our data sets come from different, different frequencies. So they come from hourly frequency, daily frequency, uh, uh, minute frequency, and so on. And the third desideratum here is to have varying prediction lengths that you train on. So when you want to use your model for your own task, you may, may want to perform short-term forecasting or long-term forecasting or whatever horizon. So we have to prepare the model to be in, in all these scenarios. So in our pre-training corpus, we consider tasks with varying prediction lengths. As you can see here on the prediction length column, we have prediction length of 24, 48, 60, and so on. And this comes together for a grand total of 8,000 univariate time series with 352 million tokens in the lag lama formulation. And the experimental protocol that we use to evaluate our model is we leave out data sets from each domain as the evaluation data sets. Now, what I mean by this is when you have a transport tourism domain, an energy domain, nature domain, and so on, you leave out one task or data set from each of these that you wanna evaluate on after training. And you also wanna leave out an entire domain, which is what we do here with banking and economics. We leave out the entire domain so that you can see how your model performs on completely new domains, which may be dissimilar to your pre-trained domains. And what you do is you train from scratch on the pre-training data sets, the data sets on the first row, and then you evaluate the performance of the model on the unseen data sets. And you perform two kinds of evaluation. One is zero shot, where you just take the model and you apply it on the data without any further adaptation or fine tuning. And the second one is of course, adaptation or fine tuning, where you train the model further on some data from the specific task. As for the baselines, 
In our case, we have no foundation models for time series that can be used as baselines because this is one of the first works to explore this direction. So we can only use task specific or supervised models as baselines. Now these are models which are trained only on the specific data set that we have to evaluate for. So they have the advantage of looking at a lot of data from that task. While we are pre-trained on a lot of other data and are just performing forecasting on that unseen data set. So we use a lot of uh, uh, data set specific models here, like statistical models, neural network models, transformer models, and LSTM based models. And these are our results. Now, if you look at the table here, we report the zero shot and fine tuned performance of lag llama. And this is CRPS where lower is better. And on the rightmost column, we report average rank, which measures how your model performs on average across data sets. And we find that zero shot, our model is comparable to a lot of other models, which are task specific. Uh, it, it achieves a score of 6.7, while baselines achieve 5, 5.07 and so on. But when you fine tune lag llama on the specific task, that is you specialize the model for that task, it is state of the art and it achieves an average rank of 2.7. The takeaway here is that it showcases strong zero shot performance and is state of the art on fine tuning. And on the right, you can see some zero shot forecasts of lag llama where it has never seen this data set or pattern before, but it can still forecast really well. So with this presentation, we presented a foundation model for univariate forecasting called lag llama with strong zero shot capabilities and state-of-the-art performance on fine-tuning. And what's next for Lag Llama? There are two directions. The first direction is to expand the capabilities of the model. So you could perform multivariate forecasting where you consider multiple variables and the correlations between them, or perform interpolation where you have to perform uh, filling in of missing values from a time series or perform tasks like classification. The other direction is building multimodal models, of course, uh, which are trained with text, with, with images, and so on. So there's a lot of interesting, exciting directions to explore from here. And this was the paper, which was a huge collaboration with a lot of wonderful people from different institutions. And our code, model, and demos are all open. You can There's a collab notebook, which you can use. You can just upload your data set and get predictions in a zero-shot manner. And you can also train Laglama on more data if you want. Thank you.